Welcome back to another episode of Housekeeping. Today, we will give you not only Eugene's high vibration, we have a lot of weird, weird, keen forehead things going on this week. So let's see what we have in store today. Let's go. Is anyone here? What did you find? You are listening to Supernatural Confessions. And welcome back to Housekeeping, ladies and gentlemen. This is your Tuesday's afternoon highlight video with me, Eugene Tay and Belinda, giving you some snippets, some uh, quick look at what's been going on with the supernatural world this week, or rather last week. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This, yeah, the whole last week is a like super teen for territory. When I look at it, I'm like, Eh, they saw more and less and less hantu already. Uh, more and more alien, uh, otherworldly dimension. Uh, I don't know what going to come out with. So how like that? We're going to kind of demonetize again. No, no. Today, we never talk about them. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, so I think we will be okay. Right. <laughs> so UFO is fine. Lah. Just don't talk about lizard people. Ah. <laughs> uh. Okay. Very good. So I have read the confessions today. Okay, we got some ghostly confessions, some weird confessions. I think it's kind of a. Uh, uh, I think the, the beauty about housekeeping is it allows us to go into various different territories. We are not really stuck to just confession stories or strictly supernatural. Anything at all that is remotely supernatural, paranormal in nature, we get to explore and talk about that. Actually, there's one I wanted to talk about, which is a nurse was giving her testimonial about how it was like for people who are near death, end of life. Oh, those kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've heard before. But it's a 10 minute long uh, video, which I think might be a bit too long. So perhaps for next week, I might <laughs> truncate it down or take on just certain parts just of the. Of yeah, then I put yeah. You, give you the link to go watch the main video. Also, yeah. to shout out to uh, <clears throat> Hellbank. Uh, uh, J- Jia King, one of our patrons and member of Supernatural Confessions, uh, pointed out to me that they have uh, one of their latest uh, podcasts where they talk about cleaning up after death. And apparently, those who go in to clean the house when someone has died has reported oh. strange sightings. <laughs> and, <gasps> and apparently, it was caught on video. Uh, so, I want to extract that video and probably drop them a message and let them know that that's what we're doing before we put it up next Tuesday if if all goes yeah. well. Uh, but you know what they say? They what? say that the dead don't know. Sometimes they don't know that they're dead. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so, that's why the things are still moving around. But like, hey, why all these strange people come to my house? Why is everybody ignoring me? Then after that, you have one of the person who's like, you can see me? <laughs> Actually, that since you brought this up, I will tell you one case that I was personally involved in and this just happened about a couple of weeks ago um, someone passed away and mm-hmm. I think because the family were all not very religious or th- did not have any uh, affiliation with any one religion uh, so when the, the the family member died they just tapau save for cremation cus- customary ritual and that was it mm-hmm. after the the funeral um, the, after the cremation Family members felt very uneasy, like something was left in the house, and they couldn't explain mm. why. So they called me up, and then through you know I, I sort of bridge um, the underworld black and white to do a reading for them, and turns out that the spirit, okay, actually, so when they went down to see the the ape, right, the trans, the medium who was trancing ape, ape couldn't find his name and birth date in the underworld. He was not in the underworld. <gasps> Oh, so he was no. he was looking and looking and looking and looking cannot find then he says everybody get out give me his home address where he passed away and he went to find to the go to the house address to find he says that person is still there in the bedroom oh my god so technically um, a religion I would say probably is like a passport for you I suppose I mean, because I without the passport you cannot you cannot exceed the country or enter the country right Correct. so you're not a registered you don't have a citizenship lah, basically yeah 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 yeah, yeah. maybe you, you know maybe that's that's something that we can talk about we can debate about discuss about because again we don't have no one has the answer uh, but if we just take this snapshot of this particular story could it be yeah no religion because no passport or it could be 
there was no proper ritual done or rites done to invite the spirit across. So that would mean when people die without proper burial, without proper ritual, that's where the wandering spirit story happens. Oh, interesting. Mm. Because if or no religion means cannot cross over, then all the atheists all die, la, all, all, all inside, walk around earth just forever. I, I, I wouldn't consider myself as a full Buddhist also. Eh. Mm. So like, then what does that mean? I only can cross halfway. Eh. <laughs> no, la, I think... It doesn't make sense also, right? I think as long as you have a... I mean, the, at the point you die, regardless whether it's Taoist, Buddhist, Christianity, or s- you, as long as there is a ritual, I feel mm. that creates the transition from one life to the next. Then, then wouldn't it mean that uh, the people who are alive, who uh, will most probably do your funeral and everything, the people who remember you, la, right? Mm. Be it friends or family or whoever it is. Then they are the one like so called giving you the power or the energy to cross over instead of passport is a religion. You know? I, then it's like <laughs> two different angles. Really. <laughs> I don't have the answer for you for this thing. It's, it's no, really like, not, I see like yeah. it, it's just a, it's just a topic to debate. It's like which one do you think it is? Oh. Is it A or is it B? Is it the living giving you the push over to the other side? Or is the religion yeah, yeah, yeah. the passport? Okay, I think mm. the okay, so for, for purpose of debate, right? The religion is the passport. Um, the prayers and the, the boost from the family is is how fast you get to the front of the line, uh, maybe. So maybe or you, maybe it's like, you know, like uh, some religion, they have the boat, then they have the green reaper, then you uh, need to give two uh, coins, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, without the two coin, cannot, cannot pass through. Uh, <laughs> you got no one pray for you, you die lonely, then you at the back of line, you're under the needy, the needy, le- the needy queue. You know, then you gotta go and pull it for 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 two coins to cross over. You know, maybe. Well, let us know what mm-hmm. you think. Uh, discuss in the comment section. Let's let's keep it friendly. Keep it um mind blowing. What do you think? It's like when people go to the other side or when people die. Is religion important? Do they play a part? What about those who don't have any religion? Where do they go? What happens? Do they just disappear because they don't believe in anything? They just fade into oblivion. And do the oh, living. Maybe the science god will come down. <laughs> the science god, Einstein. Einstein, come down. Come with me, my son. <laughs> then you see Steve drop behind. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, wow, okay. well, that that uh, that took us a bit of, of time, but let us get to today's confession uh, or today's content. Yeah, let's start with this one. This one is the one that caught my attention. I believe mm-hmm. it's from our Facebook group. It's from Thailand, if I'm not wrong. No, no, this is not from the Facebook group. This one is uh, something I saw on my timeline. Ah. Then, uh, even though the poster was uh, Thailand, mm. but this one actually happened in Turkey. You can see. Oh, the okay. The strange phenomenon, yeah. Uh, it's like a dimension like a uh, thing that was found in the sky near... I. Belkent City Turkey, Hospital, yeah. Oh, okay, Belkent City Hospital in the Turkey. Mm. So, appearing for about three minutes, so they say. Then uh, it was about 21 o'clock. So 9 o'clock, mm. la, right? And night. Mm. And it is on the 27th of September. So just so recent, so, just three days ago. Yeah. Mm. So shortly after the strange light reappeared at about uh, near to 10 o'clock. Mm. And then after that, on the same day, which occurred less than one minute before disappearing. So far, nobody's able to give a clear answer. Definitely no. Come out already, later gonna s- sniper shot by the government. Yeah, they will say it's a weather balloon. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So, you know, this is what I mean. It's like, even if we have like concrete proof and video that all this thing is happening, mm. nobody will say that, hey, really alien exists. So, everybody will say it's computer, it's fake, or this. I'm not saying that this video is real, la, but it, you know, you get what I mean? Because we have been so conditioned to disbelief. We have been fed so much bullshit, so much misinformation, so much lies over the the, the decades. And now even if Jesus Christ appear in front of us or Aiden land in front of us or ghosts appear in front of us, we catch it straight on the video, we we have all our doubts. We are more doubtful. Yeah, hey, don't bush here, you. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's tough like that's why when people say the second coming or you know time end times are near and 
deities, gods is going to walk amongst men. You know, it's, there are different um, narration from different uh, you know religious beliefs that talk talks about that. I was wondering if tomorrow one man floating in front of me and says, "I am God," you must believe me. I'm like, okay, David Blaine, chill a minute. <laughs> you know, like, how do you do this? Is there a cable? Is this a trick? You know. You, we're yeah. going to disbelieve. You're not going to straight away jump into it and go, oh, bow down to your knees and oh, dear God, you have come to find me, right? I, I think we are all so doubtful and if you believe in conspiracy theory, that's what the people deliberately create misinformation so that people stop believing. The mm-hmm. less people believe, the more people doubt, the less powerful the divine Nobody. Yeah. yeah. Interesting theory, all. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at a video of this weird, strange phenomenon that happened in Turkey. So, what do you think? Is it Photoshop? Is it AI generated? Is it like a someone trying to look for like a digital marketing job or something? <laughs> tough to say, le, Tough to. Say. I mean, it's really a right. short video. I think it looks like someone put a purple ball and kind of truncated halfway. <laughs> yeah, but there's the zoom up pictures also if you if you if you go and see. Okay, let's take a look at this video one more time first. Uh, so it's just a ball that stays there; it doesn't even move. There's a it building looks like there. It's like flickering and stuff like that, lah. I think that that's about it. All right. What did other people have to say about this? So this is how it looks like on a still image. Uh, Slightly like more close up, and this is when the ball is enlarged. Look like Doctor Strange. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, man. <laughs> this is the another dimension. Oh, then you know. someone come here and find the stones. <laughs> yeah, Deadpool and Wolverine's about to jump out, lah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I tell you another thing. I wish you I feel like. I think the movie also have like made us disbelief uh, because nowadays like the computer like AI generated stuff or whatever it mm. is is so real we can't even tell what's real or what's fake anymore. It's just going to get worse from here on because I've seen <clears throat> AI like you could take my, my my this video you could run housekeeping into an AI device uh, AI, mm. mach- AI, AI app put a still image of me and the AI is able to animate my face and read out a script in the tonality and in the style of my voice. So yeah, what I've can you that. even trust? You don't even know. Even porn, some girls that appear on, on, on internet that look so real is AI generated. The deep fake, right? Yeah. Yeah. So who knows? Okay. Oh, but this is interesting. Do you, do you have any comments what people have been talking about for this one? For this one, uh, let me check. Because uh. I'm sure there's, you know, from, from the discussion itself, we might be able to hear what others have to say. I believe this one I never put. It was because all the comments are quite true. Ah, yeah. This is the internet for you. Lah. That's why only our Supernatural uh, Confessions community is very respectable. Yeah, we, we try to be. Lah. But sometimes, you know, you, you can't take things too seriously also then you end up, you are in that position. No? Yeah, lo. That's mm-hmm. why I always say, lah, don't believe, just scroll by. Lah. <laughs> okay. Don't the, have. Don't have, huh? no, okay. the, the, the whole video is gone. Oh! <gasps> the government took it down. <gasps> because I share it on my page, but I share it only to me. So, like, you know, in, just in case I want to... Search back again. And now it's gone. If this video cannot oh, flag, uh, then I tell you this, the government is behind it. <laughs> but before that, I took a screenshot. You are in trouble already, that's it. They're going to get to you. I'm always in trouble. <laughs> Alright. Let's just take a look at this other video. This one, uh, Supernatural Confessions fan and those who are on must be the Hantu Facebook group would find this rather familiar. It's not the first time this such a video has surfaced. Definitely won't be the last. Take a look. This is a classic video from us. Is it too small? Yes, it's a bit. What we are looking at is a fitness corner 
fitness equipment at the fitness corner. Not sure where this place is. Probably look like some housing estate, and it's swinging on its own. Hmm. What do you think? Hantu, Hantu going for a workout at night? Yeah, uh, before that, I think we should give the person a uh, shout out who who has mm. submitted this video. Mm, who is this, this video is that is submitted by Alvin Cole. Alvin Cole, okay. Yeah, so thank you so much for sending in this video. So this is a classic one I've seen also many times uh, in different locations also, mm. which they say the Hantu are trying to work out. Okay, so some people, the logic side of uh, people, what they will say is that, uh, you know, you could have pushed the machine and then after that you run to this corner and then take the video and then say that, oh, the machine, you know, is, is, is running by itself. Yeah. But then again, I've also seen the video where, you know, the one that is the push-up one? Yeah. Uh, the one to work out your arms? Yeah. That one is moving. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, I've also seen uh, this very same equipment itself. Then after that, it's like vigorously, mm. like very violently moving. And then it's like non-stop moving for like, what, about uh, <clears throat> a good 30 seconds. But it's at the same consistent pace. And then it's, it's not like, you know... It didn't stop. It didn't stop. It's a consistent violence. But after thirty shaking. seconds, what happened? Uh, the video stops, lah. Oh, the but, video stops. Okay. Correct, but thirty seconds. Uh, if it's done, like you know, I I push it and then I run off somewhere. Wouldn't it like you know slowly like lose its momentum? You know, logic- yeah, logically. Speaking, like, logically speaking, but I tried this. I tried this uh, experiment at my estate. I can so push. I can push this. It will hmm. go. And run for about one minute, sixty seconds. So it could be even somebody who has gone on it, got mm. off and left. Maybe fifteen seconds. Take fifteen seconds to walk away from the side. The side. Mm. Someone come in. It'll be still a forty-five seconds of the thing moving on its own. So mm. they may not have intended to create a prank, right? But they may be truly spooked by this thing moving on its own because there's nobody around. And like I said, I tested the timing for about good 20 to 30 seconds, right? You would see it go very violent. Only after the 30 seconds mark to the to the 60 seconds mark, it starts to words, sl- uh, slow stop. down. Oh, yeah. okay, the okay. one that I saw that I cannot explain was the one in NTU. I think NTU, there was a swing. There was a cup up. And the swing would move of its own, stop. Mm-hmm. And then continue moving again. At different speed, stop. <laughs> so that to me is harder to explain. It's a strange, strange for once. So I I showed that to people. This this was years ago. This was I think pre COVID time, right? Uh, mm. And this we were discussing about this with Team O and Et. And you know what Et said? Somebody from tied a fishing line and then moved very far <laughs> and pulled because you you must understand that whoever took that video was from the host, hostel room. So oh. the playground was at, at a distance. So you imagine, okay. where, it's not like someone pull and then run and hide. It was an open field, open area. Uh. So the, the, the swing move and stop, move and stop. So if it's wind, right, all the swings should move together. Ma. But it's only yeah, one swing. Mm. So, so the ration, rationale of it is someone tie a fishing line Go very, very far away. Go very, very far, right? <laughs> pull. Okay, la, if you really want to go to that level and you really want to go and explain that way, can la. I can explain la. <laughs> but why not just go with it must be the hantu. <laughs> <laughs> you know, very debatable la, this kind of yeah, thing, right? Yeah, so right. who knows? Yeah, it's better, it's... <laughs> but I think nowadays, like, I don't know why are you really that bored that you want to make like a hantu video? You know, it's for the views. It's really... Hmm. F- it, if you look at um, the top five kind of content that you could create online and be popular, supernatural videos, mystery, true crime, all in one category, is I think number three or number four, globally. Really? Yeah. Aww. So... so I think my motivation speaking is top. Motivation speaking lifestyle is also one of the top three. I think co- confess, uh, ghost stories is three or four worldwide. Mm. You know what we should do next? What we should do true true crime. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I don't mind. Eh. I don't mind doing true crime. I like it. Uh, not that I like the true. Not that I like crime. <laughs> crime. 
But I find if when I watch Netflix and the true crime story, I feel almost like an investigator trying to, you know, dig out, debunk, ask the questions, and I get very annoyed when the police don't ask the right question. Like, why it's so in your face? Why don't you ask that? You can. It's, it's like a game of chess, right? I I put one piece here, I put one piece here. It seems like oh, I let you eat my 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 pawns everything, but then ha ha, checkmate. I've got you now, criminal. Yeah, so true crime stories. <laughs> true crime with a bit of paranormal slant, even better. Say, you see the hantu murder him? Oh, remember that one, that girl, um, the one that died in the the water tank. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The one in the US, right? Ah. Then they couldn't explain how she got there in the first place. Well, I mean, there has a documentary on Netflix that explains Plain life. You believe? Hey, look, I don't believe. It, it, boils don't down believe. To, it boils down to how much you believe, right? So documentary can tell you this is the fact. You go like, I think you're bought. You are you are paid to say that to, to close the case. This is a government conspiracy. You will never you never get a hundred percent devotion or belief, no matter how much evidence you put out there. I I also saw I also saw another one which is uh the girl mm. uh, who is like a you know like typical they start. This is a beautiful 20-year-old girl. She was a teacher, well liked, and then all by all her students and neighbors. And one day she was found with 20 stab wounds. Ah. And then the police say it was a suicide. <laughs> then they interview the parents. Do you think she killed herself? The both parents, no. <laughs> I stabbed myself 20 times just to make sure I die. You still have the energy after three steps. Please. <laughs> Or the, the wife who so, stabbed the husband 15 times. It was an accident. He ran into the knife in my hand 15 times. Okay. Back to supernatural confession. Okay. So from true crime to fitness, fit ghosts, uh, let's take a look at this other, not quite supernatural, but supernaturally ish enough for those with still uh, childlike. Charlotte Innocence and want to believe in magic. This is one of my favorite brands. So I'm going to show you how this one works and then we'll test some of the other ones. So what these get used for, um, first you want to use uh, a tank or a tray that's, that won't absorb water. Okay. So plastic is perfect. So okay. that nothing, you know, no moisture will get into that. Sure. And I will uh, load it up with some substrate here. Okay. Or wood chips, you know. Okay. And I'll even that out. Nice. Want to even that out a little bit? Sure. That's yeah, great. Good job. Okay. okay. So this is my favorite brand. So okay. again, this is the one we're going to try and see how the other brands compare to it. Um, and we get this from China. We actually relabel them. They're not produced in the U.S. Okay. <laughs> and this is what they look like. So they're just like a little fuzzy pellet. Okay. okay. It's a hamster pellet. And it gets buried into the substrate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and once it's buried in there, what I do is I take a little bit of water and I find that five drops right over the area works best. I think I just did a little more than five, but that's okay. okay. But that'll absorb into the hamster pellet and you just sort of give it a little shake and it will, it'll actually sprout. Okay. okay, see, and it will sprout, okay? okay? So just hang tight, watch these guys for a second, I'll go, sure. I'll go get the other brands. Just make sure those don't dry out. Okay. All right. I don't want to believe anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Why I share this video with you? Why? Okay. We obviously know like it's a prank, right? Okay. We know, it's, yeah. It's magic, magic prank. Uh, Carbonaro. Uh, Colorado, is yeah, it? Yeah, Carbonaro, yeah. I cannot, cannot really see the word there. Okay. Mm. Uh, it says magic prank, right? So we know it is a prank. Yeah. But can you imagine if like uh, the same person who is like trying to sell you like, uh, I don't know, a miracle water now, mm. then he just put, 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 then after that the fish come back to life, mm. like right in front of you, he even have you touch the thing. What are you going to say? You're going to say he's Jesus. Ah. Tell you, what, what, what are you going to say? I think that's what we're talking about. I think in the entire housekeeping today, right, we are about challenging beliefs. We show you purple ball in the sky. We show you the fitness thing moving and down in, which is, now we show you a magic trick that is a prank it's sort of put into question everything that you see in video and even if this is right in front of you and you look at the woman she's like wow wow <laughs> she totally and then she believes touched, into it she, she touched the thing you know she yeah. feel that there's no hamster there where the person called the uh, what was it called the, the substrate is it? The, the wood chips yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, 
I was like, suddenly just pop what pest <laughs> the hamster come out. So I was like, what to believe? Real or not real? Mm-hmm. Wow. I need to change the Facebook page already. I think the Facebook group is what? <clears throat> Maybe it's the hantu. <laughs> <laughs> it might be the hantu. It's probably the hantu. <laughs> it could be the hantu. And hey, now you know they just sound like dating app already. What are we? We may be the hantu. <laughs> no more no more no more no more binary, no more yes and no already. Now now everything is in question. Yeah, no more, no more, uh, just like half-half, you know, yeah. everything. <laughs> Can't believe our mind. Let's say, yeah, with videos like that, how do we not question things? How do we just believe in things? Cannot, do No way. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Today, I will question your faith. Question <laughs> your belief. <laughs> what is real and what's yeah. not real. Don't forget. Who's uh, to say? Don't forget, huh? if your faith and belief is not strong, you may not cross over and so on. Huh? So... Yeah. <laughs> you are in the middle of nowhere now, my friends. <laughs> it's a challenge. Okay, the next one, speaking of challenge, it's a challenge to stay with someone who don't take shower. Could you do that, B? If you're... Yeah. Let's see, you get... Okay, so this is... This story comes from India. Okay? <clears throat> Women in India ask for divorce because husband only bathes once a month. And then the comment section was like, why don't you check first? Why don't you know before that? My suspicion is this is India. It is arranged marriage. You don't know who you're going to marry before this. So when you're going to present the husband to you, of course, he, they scrub him clean, <laughs> put clothes on him, and present it to you as, nah, this is your husband. Get married. Everything good. All right? But then later on, uh, he will show his true colors because... Husband sprinkles holy water on himself instead of taking bath. Officials were taken aback when he spoke to her husband, who revealed that he bathed only once or twice a month. And instead of regular showers, he would sprinkle himself with the Gangajal, which is a sacred water from the river Ganges, once a week. <sighs> this is India we're talking about. Even 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 in Singapore, la, you bathe once a week already. Uh. Have you ever... Okay, I don't know. I, I, I went to design school, so I know how once a week showers smell like. Because the design students, right, you know, we don't have exams. You know what we have instead? We will have like a... After a nine week long, yeah. we will have like a deadline. Uh-huh. And then all that particular week, right, all like let's say our five to seven projects, right, have to be submitted that particular week. So that particular week, before that, right, uh, before that one or two week, right, everybody will be stressed up, nobody eats, nobody drink, nobody do anything. We basically just, like, you know, transcend into godhood, really. We are no longer human beings. And then some people, they don't even shower, really. So I know what does one week never shower smell like. I'm going to ask, I don't care about those people who don't shower. I'm going to ask you, B, do you, do you shower in a one week? I shower, I shower. I, I sleep like about three hours, la, but I, I try to shower, I try to eat, you know, yeah. no matter how busy I am. I'm, I might be like cutting up some stuff, then after that I'll like take, take a, like a mouthful of noodle, and I was like, how can you not, how can, it, uh, I, okay, I suppose can, I'm, I was in army camp, I've seen how people not shower, oh God, good lord. I'll tell you a story about Stephen Lim. Uh, he was my bunk mate. Okay, so even, oh my God. even when I go out to outfield, right, I would at night go to the water point and I would fill up two one liter water bottle and I would shower myself. Like like I mean the one small bar of soap is fuck all lah, really it just doesn't work. But at least you water down your tower down, right? Mm. It's whole day of sweat and grime. Then you just, then you oh get away wear your dirty clothes again next day for one whole week. So <clears throat> mm. there's one guy I know for a fact did not shower one week. He's a very good friend of mine, a buddy of mine in, in camp. Uh, this was during reservist time. So he was asking me, ah, this was I think early two thousands, twenty years ago. Hey Eugenia, how you keep your underwear clean? Ah? I said. <clears throat> I take a plastic bag then I cut holes on two sides you get a big one uh, the, the durian carry durian and cut holes on two sides 
Then you wear lah, you put your leg through lah, one side each. Then you wear or your underwear outside the plastic bag. Ah, then your underwear won't get dirty, mm. right? You know, you, you keep it clean, ma, waterproof, ma. Then you, wow, really ah? Then you go and do. I totally forgot about it, right? Then when we went road march, then I heard, ch, 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 ch. Then I'm like, where's the sound coming from? Then I look at him, then he, you tell me, you tell me, you tell me, then I, oh, okay, good luck. Thinking that after a while, he's going to get uncomfortable, he's going to throw it away, right? <coughs> Five days later, <laughs> he came back. So we all throw our things. We all came back to the bar. Really, we throw our things on the the floor. Then, wash shack already, like half dead already lah. Then I want to go and take a shower. And everything. Then I had the most pungent, rotting egg smell hit me in the face, and I was maybe about two to three meters away from his bed. Then all of a sudden, I said, "Wow, well, what's that smell?" Right, it smelled like something died. Then I turn around in time to see him pull down the plastic bag from his... I mean, pull out... His pants was at his knee already. His underwear was down and he's pulling out the plastic bag. You can hear the... Oh my god. And I saw, and I cannot unsee this, there was green... The plastic bag was green. Okay, There was a green layer of slime. And st- some of the, the, the slime is still up to his balls. And it was an angry red. His, his groin oh, area was <laughs> his groin area was like infected to the max. Oh, I want to for me, Oh my god, the gross. So we talk about not bathing. That's the horror story I have to share. Not quite supernatural, but I was traumatized. You make me get Eugene. Uh, story. That's right. You can tell people that. That's how rumors start. Eugene make Belinda get. Okay, so moving oh on to uh, this this particular <laughs> moving on to this particular story, I'm going to read out to you about uh, must share news. Woman in India seeks divorce over husband's monthly bathing habit. A woman in India recently sought a divorce from her husband for an unusual reason: his infrequent bathing, which he did only once a month. According to India Today, her discomfort with his body odor became unbearable just 40 days into their marriage. In search of a rev- resolution, the woman approached the family counselling centre in Agra, Uttar Pradesh, experiencing, expressing she could no longer live with a man who maintained such poor hygiene. Okay, so besides this story, what I really want to talk about, why I included this in this uh, housekeeping is the Ganges River is the holy river. All mm. Indians believe that when they go and bathe in the river, it will cleanse them spiritually. It's almost like a rebirth. So that's okay. why he would sprinkle water on him. To him, it's enough. It's cleanse. But that's cleaning your spiritual self, but not your physical self. You know, when we were in India, we saw one floating carcass of uh. down the river. One lady washing her her clothes. Uh, and on the other side, they have a burial going on and throw the ash into the river. And down the river, somebody bathing. One group of kids bathing. So it's not it's within the culture that the river is so holy enough that it will take care of it, even even in the physical cleanliness department. I I, I guess this guy take it to the extreme lah. I suppose. Uh, so if you know Murali, right? Uh, he conducts this. He goes to the this part of India. This one part of India, he himself will dip himself in the river. Every up above his head and come out that is spiritual cleansing so if you're interested uh, you, if you're interested B, uh, let me know lah. we can organize something and you can go there it's very okay. eye-opening <laughs> maybe we'll meet the man there and we'll never shower for once a week he come and refuse you know <laughs> you, you, can, you can smell him a mile, a mile away okay <laughs> confession time I, I just feel uh, oh. I feel very poor thing for the wife uh, who have to sleep beside him for 40 days uh. How? I don't know lah. Then if you never, if you then stay together, then after he go and complain to your mother, uh, you also die. She said is the term she used is an unbearable odor coming from him. Imagine you have your the wife newly wed, you have to consummate the marriage, right? Then you have to go I down. think consummate marriage. I think not so bad. It's just like the afterwards whether they. Tanky panky or not, you have to sleep in the same room as your husband. Right? Then maybe he wants it, leh. He roll over, then he oh baby, 
I want some saki saki. Then how? I pay money, yeah. you go and find prostitute. <laughs> I give you blessings. You go. I I outsource. I outsource the work. Yeah, so prostitute also give you money. <laughs> then you do F off. I go and bathe. Alright. <laughs> 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 you see lah. You see what the two of us do. Oh man. Today's, today's confession is horror of a different magnitude. All right, let's go to confession time. This one is anonymous. Um, B, you want to take this? We got we got couple tonight. So one, two, okay, three. Okay, so <clears throat> so anonymous member says, I gave birth about two years ago at a specific hospital during the later part of COVID, whereby the kids are not allowed in the ward. Hence, hubby had to be home taking care of them. I was assigned to a single bedded ward that was very last minute and it was located at the very end of the corridor, furthest away from the cl- uh, nurse station. On the first night, I heard frequent tapping on the window. But because I was so damn tired and groggy from the anesthesia and the, from the C-section, I didn't bother much and continue sleeping and be busy with the little ones during the waking hour. Second night, it happened again. I was scared pissed at the time at the same time perhaps due to hormones i actually walked towards the window and peer straight ah <gasps> she brave or she <laughs> at that moment i didn't know whether i wanted to see something or nothing but i didn't see anything was silently saying kanina you better don't come and disturb me <laughs> i'm leaving tomorrow morning <laughs> I couldn't remember if the tapping continued, but I was not affected in any other way during the long night. Thinking back, I was wondering if the room was assigned to me uh, was for silent birth because it was just very different uh, very different from a single bed, uh, single bed of wards I had previously and the, why the tapping, the wards was on the seventh floor. <gasps> what's, this, what's this silent birth thing? Is it? I, I don't know. I, I'm gonna Google it now. Let me Google. Birth. It so, sounds very sus. Is it like you have five kids already, then your next kid come out, you ah talk, come out and give birth already. There's no screaming, there's no shouting, oh god, and all that, is it? Oh maybe the mother die. Huh? Is that I what silent birth I means? I Googling it now. Uh silent birth, sometimes known as quiet birth, is a birthing procedure. Oh that everyone in the birth should re- refrain from spoken words as much as possible. So instead of the doctors shouting, push, push, or any loud uh, encouragements like, you can do it, and stuff like that, right? So what they have is that they will have uh, maintaining uh, non-verbal, uh, sorry, so maintaining verbal silence so nobody can see anything. The church member believe that the noise and the sound of the words of the child, uh, sorry, the sound and the words while the child was being born could cause trauma to them. It's a Scientology thing. Okay, I'm not a woman. I've never given birth before, but I, I've seen enough video footage to... Okay, the line that from Scientology says, the process of childbirth where labor and delivery is done in a calm and loving environment. From the videos I've seen about childbirth, there are nothing <laughs> calming about it. I mean, if you're in so much pain, if I can't make any noise, I think you have to cut out my vocal cords. Huh? <laughs> Can you imagine your wife is out there pushing, hoo, hoo, and you go like, shh, baby, be calm. No, you have to silence her. She can't even <laughs> talk anyway. Sign like, Ipa, <laughs> <"Walao eh." laughs> That's her face expression. Silent birth. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Okay, like, okay, wait, wait. It's C-section. It's as silent as a birth can be. La. Right? You put under the uh, anesthesia, yeah, then you that's cut true, out, that's true. baby comes out, she, pet, okay. pet, 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 baby cry. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know. Okay, but what she did was rule number three of Eugene's four part how to deal with Hantu steps. Strategy. First one, ignore. Second one, you... You uh, negotiate, uh, please la, don't disturb me. Uh, you tell politely. That one you can't even call Then she, number three. La. Then she quiet already. Think, think nothing, so. nothing, no, nothing disturbed her anyway. Mm. Okay, let's look at the comment section, what people are talking about. Uh, Faustina Chase says, 
if my memory serves me right, I think I've heard my aunt's story when she gave birth to my cousin more than 40 years ago at Alexandra Hospital. Some weird sounds crying could be heard. And then after that, a pic of Mother Mary, or was it a crucifix, was placed by my... Did it just, ah. appear? Did it just appear? No, I think maybe like somebody, like one of the nurse or the doctor, suddenly just... I think you need this, ma'am. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I think it's very common in hospitals. But ah yeah, leave the babies and women who just fought a battle of death during childbirth alone. Nah. Rosina said mm. the huge angel with flapping wings appeared outside the window of nursery at level two. Oh, maybe. Who knows? If the angel can't visit you, does it mean something? I Why would the angel come and visit you? I, I wonder if angels take or uh, the reaper take life away and when children are born would the angels come to deliver souls to the baby or the baby is alive right and then you deliver one soul nah go in this is your new home one by one all the reincarnated souls go in one by one mm, interesting right, fly to the so nursery like, then they drop you inside they pshung, pshung. like the, the, the cupid <clears throat> they just shoot you into your body I spoke to Joey one of the confessor uh, the, her mm. confession is not out yet she re- in her confession, she remembers when she died. Oh. And she also remembers when she was reborn. Oh. And her consciousness did not come in when the child was one year old or one month or one day old. She remembered going to the body of a baby when a child and waking up or being not waking up. I mean the baby, the child was already awake, having the consciousness that she was five years old. And that's where she started from. Five years old. Mm. Hey, you say this, uh, you make me a bit scared, you know. What? Because I teach young children, right? Sometimes uh, I can see uh, they're soulless on it. Nobody is at home. Maybe it's like... not saying it's not saying all the child is like that. But sometimes you can see uh, they are like uh like on autopilot mode, uh, you know, until someone come and drive the vehicle. Oh. Yeah. So what I will do with the children. I don't like them to be on autopilot mode. Oh. What I will do, I will talk to the children and then I'll say, okay, this is the things that you have to be aware of, right? So tonight when you go home, you tell me what color is the moon, whether the moon is big or small and then what shape and like, uh, you know, what does it look like? Then I show them like different chart of the moon, right? Mm. Something yeah. like that, right? Then the next assignment I have is, okay, tonight or this week, your assignment is you go home and then after that, you ask your mommy to bring you to go and see the sunset. Then you come and tell me what color the sunset is. Then after that, I'll train them. And then after that, more observation skill. Then I'll like have this communication with the mommy. Say, hey, you know, mm. I find that your child uh, at this point of time, it's like I think four or five already, yeah. in kindergarten already. They mm. should know like certain colors, right? Yeah. Or certain things that they should know. This child in particular cannot tell me whether the mom has short hair or long hair five years old you know cannot tell me short hair or long hair and then i show different pictures to them this was an ongoing conversation for half an hour this child couldn't figure out it's not he's non-verbal or he's like you know has special needs he's perfectly like uh, able to communicate like mm. other stuff mm. but he is like there's nobody home you get it like no, if you ask no the driver. person, to do yeah. When you ask the person to like do something, then you go and do A. Mm. Then after A already, right? Then he'll just sit there, like never move anymore. Already. The mm. the vehicle just stop. <laughs> Very interesting, right? I tell you. So maybe he the angel never come and deposit soul yet, lah. Ah, uh, the the body taken. Ah. Then until I keep telling the parents to do this, right? Suddenly, ah, uh, after that recently. The parents say uh wanted to quit for a while. Then I went to like also tell them that you know actually I see some improvement and stuff like that. And really he did improvement. So uh this has been like about three months really since the parents say want to quit. And then after that they continue about for three more months. The soul come already, you know, Eugene. He is able to communicate with his dad uh what he wants to eat. He's able to tell his mom uh whether he likes chicken nugget or not, don't like chicken nugget mm-hmm. anymore. He's mm. able to tell his mom, uh, oh, I don't want a Milo, I want Coca-Cola instead. Mm. So somebody is home already now. Mm, mm, mm. 
very interesting theory that yeah. I think we just accidentally uncovered. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like very rare. I would say out of maybe about 100 people, maybe about two or three is like that. Before they reach the age of five, nobody. <coughs> we did not expect this conversation to go this way, but now that Easy. all this is happening, maybe, uh, I mean, Joey might be onto something. So let us know, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think? Did we stumble upon something? Is this conversation something that is familiar to you, similar to you, to you, something you have encountered and, you know, hearing what we and I talk about suddenly give you an aha moment, a light bulb moment? Let us know in the comment section. Uh, could children before the age of five not have a reincarnated soul in them? Some, some. Some, 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 some. Some, some. Yeah. some, some. Not all, some. Yeah. Most of them already have people driving the vehicle. Already. One story, again, if I can find the source, I'll, I'll, I'll try to search for it. Um, I read this somewhere a long time ago. Uh, a child, when he reached the age of five, could immediately start playing the piano without prior training. Like he pick up Ooh. like okay, so from one to four, okay, like then again, one to four, one to two, maybe you, your hand, your motor, your motor skill coordination not there, three to four. So there was no interest in piano at all. At the age of five, yeah. he started playing the piano like a maestro. So on one hand, you could say, Charles gifted, pick up the piano for the very first time, excel. Or could it be a soul just came into the body? And that soul remembers the past life of playing the piano. The skill came from the past life. Yeah, there's actually one of the, I think it's a YouTube series or from like some America uh, channel that we don't have in Singapore. Uh, I believe the the show is called There's a Ghost in My Child. There is a ghost mm. in my child. It's a whole series talking about, you know, the 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 person remember uh, how they die and stuff ah. like that. Yeah. The series is called The Ghost Inside My Child. You can go and watch it. I, I don't know saw. whether true or fake, but I believe some of the stories, some of the people that they encounter are true. La. So, you know, y'all can go and debunk it. Well, the the, the most latest uh, video that was out was six months ago. So, it's, it's still quite... It's still ongoing, right? Mm -hmm. 2.3 yeah. so million pretty, views. Yeah, Interesting, look, right? Look so, at it now. Yeah. <laughs> All are more guess. kids. I want to find one Asian one. Come on, we do an Asian one. Let's go. You can start your class first. <laughs> start anyway, my class. Uh. Start, start. Later, they start to tell me freaky thing that I like. Teacher, I remember you from my past life too. <gasps> Call it, kids say the scariest things uh, There's a new series Every Wednesday on Conference. Okay. But, but Eugene Do you have any memory From like when you are very young I also have adults right Telling me That they have no memory When they are a child mm. Totally zero So I think they Might be one of the Soul that has been sent later In age uh. If you take the MRT right At peak hour uh, At 7.30am From any MRT station right You see a lot of adults Also got no soul <laughs> They'll sit in the MRT just and like that. for half an hour, half an hour like that. <laughs> so, I don't depressed. know. <laughs> but my memory I remember uh that was very, very young. I believe I was maybe about uh two or three years old. I I remember being in the cradle, uh, you know, in, in like the, the, the basket net thing, yeah. the, the, the basket that's like bouncing one. Mm. I have memory from then. So when people tell me they don't have memory from when they are young, I like sus. Mm, mm. I don't remember. <clears throat> I don't remember my, my youth. I remember my primary one or kindergarten at the very least. Before that I can remember. Yeah, yeah. Kindergarten is still quite common. Uh. Got people don't even remember kindergarten. I'm like So now we are saying that five years old seems to be the magic number where a soul gets designated into a body. Transported. Right? Because most of us can't remember before five what? So our life officially starts at five. Hey, this 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 requires further research, okay? <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Maybe next week we'll come back with more. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get to our next confession. Yep. Uh, yeah, this one. You wanna read? Okay, so anonymous member 
It says that about a year back, due to a back infection, my grandma didn't have much time left. Hence, we quickly tried to arrange family members relative to visit her before she passed on. One of the people who didn't get to see my uh, see her last was my great so was my grandmother's eldest daughter, who is also my aunt. What happened was that my eldest aunt wasn't in the right state of mind due to a failed marriage and problematic relationship with her child. And there was also a problematic... Hey, sorry, I'm confused really. There was also uh, some unhappiness going uh, on between them as my eldest aunt felt that my grandmother keep nagging at her, didn't support her through the kind of uh, grudges. So she didn't believe that uh, she didn't believe us when we first informed her that her mother didn't have much time left and she should quickly go and visit her. In the end, she didn't turn up for the, both the hospital and the funeral. <sighs> Habis. Because she didn't believe and she, we didn't insist due to the fear that she will kick up a ruckus during the event. However, weeks later, one fine day, when my second aunt went to visit her, she asked the letter if my grandmother had passed away and uh, passed on because she actually dreamt about the whole scene of my grandmother breathing her last and a white shroud of cover her face in the hospital. Believe like <laughs> We would like to believe that it was my grandmother's way of notifying her eldest daughter that she has passed on. It's so sad. Uh, this kind of not. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, Chinese say filial piety is important, right? It's uh, one of the most important, most important, if not one of the most important values in the Chinese culture. That's true, uh, but I feel like it's so sad. Mm. Like, mm. wouldn't even like if you have an elder parent, wouldn't like you check on her? Mm, yeah. Also, yep. Just go down for a visit. I don't think it will be difficult, then, right? Yeah. So, wow. The, the grandma somehow sent her a video SMS stream <laughs> to her <laughs> to say that, hey, you know, I go already. Uh. You know, it's sometimes, uh, if you if you do this, do it like that, uh, you will not have good luck. You know? Chinese belief, uh, you know, the, the your ancestor passed away with grievances and you cannot close the can let go of the grievances, right? Your the future generation is quite sway, and nah. But then again, what if you have a a, yeah. a relative? I'm just saying, uh, thinking out loud, right? Okay, that uh cannot let go of mm. grudges. Then, like you've already tried your best to make amends, and then it, it just doesn't go away. Mm. Then what happens then? Do we get like a priest to pray for her, or like well, I don't know? And we just talk about how some spirits they cannot let go, they still linger in the land of the living, right? Because they don't cross over. Well, I mean, for her sake, I hope she has crossed over because this could be one of those I cannot, if I don't see my eldest daughter, I cannot say sorry, I cannot get a sorry from her, I may not go. I mean, we heard enough stories like that. Uh, right? Maybe the maybe maybe the mom is trying to tell her sorry, like in her way. Mm, 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 mm. And just like notifying her, like, you know, let bygones be bygones because I'm already dead. Hmm. Yeah. La. So maybe the maybe the mom the mom has easier time letting go than the daughter. Daughter oh, still oh. Well, I don't go and see my mother. I don't know. It's so negative. The mother's like, ah oh, yeah, I'm going already, lah. I come to you la. You don't come to me, I come to you in my dream. Bye. <laughs> yeah, maybe one one last farewell. Yeah. I'm going, <sighs> going on to a better place now. Whether you like me or don't like me, too bad. Okay, next one. Oh, this one is... Uh, what's this? This oh, one's the, the, the one we, we had. Okay, okay, so I got one more here. It's also yeah. anonymous, I read lah. Okay. Sharing a personal story. Back in 2018, when I was dating my now husband, his grandmother was in the final stages of cancer. Oh, another grandmother. And barely hanging on. And this time, I still had not met his entire family yet. One evening, we were out and he got news that his grandmother was in a final moment, so he rushed off to be with her. I went home to bed as it was getting late. Here is when I must tell you that the TV in my living room is barely used and the remote is always kept safely pointing away from the TV itself. I only use it for Netflix and nothing else. 
I also barely speak Mandarin, so I never watch any Chinese programs. Ah, my, my tribe. At around 3 a.m., I was woken up by a TV going off on its own. It was on Channel 8, and the volume was enough to drop me awake while I was sound asleep in my mid air condition. Oh, in my air conditioned room. I went to the living room to switch it off, and I felt a weird but non threatening presence at the sofa area. I switched the TV off and said, I'm sorry, but I really need to sleep, so please don't disturb me. I went back to my room and glanced at my phone exactly five minutes before I woke up. My husband had texted me that his grandma had passed away. I don't know if this was an uncanny coincidence, but I did ascertain that with my mother-in-law a few years later that Ama indeed liked to watch Channel 8 and was hard of hearing, so the volume was always too loud. My... <laughs> Maybe Ama got bored of hearing me snore, so she turned on the TV to wake me up. This never happened again. May her soul rest in peace. It's damn spooky, eh? This one, this one, I believe it's grandma coming back. Yeah, but it's not. It's not he, her grandma. It's the future husband's grandma. Yeah. Maybe come to see her because like. You know, I, I never get to meet my uh future daughter in law. Great grandchildren. Great yeah, great grandchildren. We 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 don't get to see them, but maybe I'll get to see uh your wife instead. I'm just thinking, right, because they're not married yet. Yeah. Back then, yeah. right? Uh at the point have not met have not met the family yet. Okay? Yeah. So when she said she went home to bed. I assume she went back to her home to bed, not the family's house. Yeah, because she says that the TV in my living room. Ah. So grandma really came over to go and look at her. Lah. Probably, probably. I think it's like, have to make her presence known. Yeah. Or maybe, or maybe before she go over, you know, want to put the passport around ah, that ah, time, ah, stamp passport ah, that time. Ah, ah. Maybe it's like, can I have like one wish? I got this amount of credit in my bank account right now. Oh, you got a ghostly bank account. No, like you go to prison, you got spiritual bank account. You have one phone call to make. You know when you go to prison, you got one. So when you go to the other side, it's like you can make one phone call. Who you want to go and disturb? I go and disturb the. I want to visit my yeah. I want to visit my uh you know my grandson's future wife. Then get transported there. Oh, so this is how you look like. Okay. Okay. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> ah, I like this one. Nice nice ending to a good uh, housekeeping day today. That's uh, the end? Yes, the end. We have really uh, 59 we, minutes. We have one more. Which one? Sage and pass out. <laughs> ah, so, this one, it's not so much confession. I wanted to end this off as a... Oh, as okay. A, Oops. No, 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 it's okay. It's nicely, nicely segue to that. So before we say goodbye, there's one particular video that we have of you. Uh, we have for you. Now, usually one of my litmus tests for people is I will search a place or I put a Palo Santo. So to see whether you like the smell or not. So if you don't like the smell, uh, you are sus. Watch. Something wrong with you. When you're burning stage in the house and you pass out, that means you are the evil spirit. <laughs> oh, no. Then like, when your family comes back, it's like, what are you doing holding like the two grass? <laughs> I'm, I'm evil. I'm the one. <laughs> Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have for you today on housekeeping. We end off right on time. I kind of like the, the very tight discussion that we have today although it was not entirely supernatural not hantu related but I hope some of the uh, <laughs> stories that we share with you are quite horrific enough if I'm going to suffer to Stephen Lim's plastic underwear so will you join Ooh. me in my trauma we are trauma bonding here uh, no thank you <laughs> alrighty send us uh, your, your comments on the discussion what you think about what we talked about let us know engage us and if you have anything to share something you want to point out well you know we, we you know Belinda IG you know my number 
9459-4931. Get in touch with us directly. Or you can always go to our Facebook group. Uh, it must be the Hantu. Might be the Hantu. Probably the Hantu. Could be the Hantu. But it's definitely the Hantu. And leave your stories there. And uh, Belinda and I, when we go in and take a peek, we might select just your confessions to share next week. Yeah. Uh, so... Any last Anything words? else left to say? Yes. Stay no. safe. The spooky season is here. Halloween season. October! Oh, October 1st. Yeah. I'll be going overseas. So maybe, maybe if I feel safe enough, I will go and cosplay overseas too. Okay. During the Halloween period. Please, go and, please go and find some hantu and then come back with some stories, please. I, I, I try my best. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, folks. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Good night. What did you find? You are listening to Supernatural Confessions. <laughs>